everybody. Welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today, we're going to be discussing a medication known as furosemide. Its brand name is Lasix. And before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So furosemide is a potent diuretic that works by blocking the absorption of sodium and chloride in the kidney tubules. This causes a profound increase in urine output. In terms of indications for use, furosemide is indicated to be used in the treatment of hypertension or high blood pressure. It can also be used to treat edema associated with different sources. So it can be used to treat edema associated with congestive heart failure. It can treat edema associated with renal failure. And it can also be used as an adjunct therapy or an add-on therapy to treat pulmonary edema. Now, before somebody was to use furosemide, there are some contraindications that they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings that they should be made aware of. If a patient had anuria, which is the inability of their kidneys to produce urine, they would not be able to use furosemide. Also, if somebody had a hypersensitivity to furosemide or any other component of the product, they would also not be able to use this medication. Now, in terms of precautions, we should avoid giving furosemide with aminoglycosides. It should be noted that some patients have had reported increases in their blood sugar or blood glucose. Patients should be made aware that electrolyte imbalances may occur. Patients would be at an increased risk of experiencing electrolyte imbalances if they were using higher doses of furosemide or if they had a restricted salt diet. Asymptomatic hypouricemia or gout may occur using furosemide. If somebody had a pre-existing electrolyte disturbance, they should correct this disturbance before they start using furosemide. Patients with a sulfonamide allergy may be at an increased risk of experiencing an allergic type reaction to furosemide. Autotoxicity, including tinnitus, reversible or irreversible hearing impairment, and deafness have occurred with the use of furosemide, but this is usually only a risk with, the, with a rapid injection of the medication. Renal or kidney damage may occur while using this medication, so patients should be monitored for signs of damage. And lastly, elderly patients would be at an increased risk of experiencing dehydration. Now, once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings, and they start to use furosemide, they may receive their dose in an oral tablet, an oral solution, or an injectable solution. So if somebody is using furosemide to treat their hypertension or high blood pressure, they may start initially with 80 milligrams daily, given in two divided doses throughout the day. The dose would then be individualized from patient to patient based on their response with their blood pressure. The usual dosing range would be 20 milligrams to 80 milligrams daily, again given in two divided doses. When using furosemide to treat edema, a patient may start with 20 or 80 milligrams given as a single dose, and they would have the option to repeat the dose 6 to 8 hours later. They would also have the option to increase the dose by 20 or 40 milligrams, but they would have to wait six or eight hours to do this dose increase. For clinically severe edema, the dose may go as high as 600 milligrams daily. So as with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using furosemide, so I'll go over some of those here now. Hyperuricemia, as well as hypomagnesemia, may occur. Some patients may experience a loss in appetite, and others may experience spasm of the bladder. Some more serious but rare side effects would be orthostatic hypotension, which is a drop in blood pressure when going from a seated to a standing position. Some patients may experience a drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, also known as DRESS. Other dermatological side effects include Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. Some patients may experience thrombocytopenia and others may experience anaphylaxis. That's all we're going to talk about today with furosemide or Lasix. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.